Hello, I'm Martin from Ashby's Cleaning Equipment and today I'd like to show you our 250 PSI Enforcer Carpet Cleaning Machine. But before we take a look at this carpet cleaning machine, I'd like to talk to you about the basic principle of carpet cleaning so we understand the theory, because this video is designed for people who are unboxing the machine for the first time when it's arrived on a pallet, and maybe they've never done carpet cleaning uh, before. So if we look at the theory behind it, it'll help understanding how the machine works a little bit simpler. I'm being ably assisted by Alana. Say hello, Alana and uh, she's here with her iPhone. So yeah, let's get this video going. The theory of carpet cleaning. So when you clean a carpet, you first want to thoroughly dry vacuum. So you can do that with a standard dry vacuum cleaner, an industrial one, preferably with some kind of turbo head. Uh, we offer, if we look over here, a dry vacuum attachment that will connect to your machine. I'll show this in another video, but basically, that connects to your dry vacuum tool, which is supplied. And the clever bit, well, if we take a look at the head, you have that turbo head. It's an air turbo head that we spoke about, complete with hair wrapped around it as well, which makes it look very, very nice. <laughs> mm. um, but this connects to your vacuum hose on your carpet cleaning machine. And this connects to the water hose on your carpet cleaning machine. This is constantly sucking that way, dry air. And this here supplies via a jet mounted inside this vacuum tube, a wall of water going across the vacuum tube, kind of like a waterfall. So as the water, sorry, the dry air and dirt comes past the waterfall in effect, it turns into um, wet slurry, which is returned into the machine's dirty water tank. This here is a, a valve which allows you to vary the amount of water that comes out so that if you've got like a 135 PSI machine, not many people have these days, but if you did have, you should be buying this machine, but if you did have, you can have it fully open and then you can reduce it down if you've got higher pressures. We do, yeah, there we go. We do, um, that's fully closed. That's fully open. Inline is fully open. Uh, reduce it down so that you're not putting out too much water, but the jet is very fine anyway, so you only use a little bit of water. But what you do do is that you um, harness the full power of the vacuum of your machine, which on something like this enforcer is incredible. So you're dry vacuuming at a much higher standard than you would do if you were using uh, any kind really of commercial vacuum cleaner and uh, you get 100% filtration, and you're using something the customer hasn't seen before. You're using, in this occasion, you'd be using your enforcer. Take a little peek at it, Alana. Um, yeah, which is obviously a little bit more uh, impressive than using, you know, a gray uh, industrial vacuum cleaner. So I'll just pop this down there. So the first thing you do is you remove the dry soilage by giving it a thorough dry vacuum. The second thing that you want to do once you've dry vacuumed and you've got rid of that pet hair and dry soilage is apply the detergent via a pre-spray. So um, I won't be focusing on detergents and things like that, but you can apply a pre-spray with either over here, a pump up sprayer, and this is called an XI6 uh, pump up sprayer. They come with a choice of three jets. So one's good for pre-spraying, one's good for applying things like anti-static, and the other one is a little bit finer and is good for applying things like carpet protector, stain protector. Um, they're not expensive. They are fairly well made for a plastic sprayer. So they last a reasonable amount of time, a lot more, uh, last a lot longer than the sort of thing you'll get in a DIY shop they've got chemical resistance seals. So they're quite a good way to apply a general purpose pre-spray, put your chemical in, dilute it with water. Another quite clever way of applying your detergent as a pre-spray, and this is the method that I prefer, is using a Hydroforce uh, Revolution sprayer, which is an inline sprayer. That means that it takes, you connect your water hose from your machine to here, and it takes the water that's in your solution tank and it mixes in whatever is in this container here. So you put your own neat magic mixture of pre-spray in here, whatever your preference is. And the clever bit, and if you just come over here, Alana, and have a little look just at this uh, dial there. I don't know, should we move over where there's a bit more light? 
You see that okay? I don't know if that's upside down for people, but yeah, let's come around this way. Um, it, it goes from anything from a one to four dilution all the way up to a one to 64, which is a lot, uh, a lot more diluted than we would ever want. But if you look here, you've got one, one to 16, one to 24. So you can basically decide how strong you would like to apply your pre-spray without overwetting. And you, you can, of course, apply it hot with some temperature from the machine. So you're not overwetting and you're applying your pre-spray hot, which makes it very, very effective. Um, and that is my preferred way to do it. These things last for ages as well. So they're, they're really great things to have. They're quite expensive, but they're well worth the money and they go on for a long, long time. Uh, you'll find them on our website. We'll put some links in with this product. Um, yeah, so you dry vacuum, you pre-spray uh, to put down your detergent and then you agitate it in, which you can do with something simple like a carpet brush, which is here. A simple carpet brush. You normally use these things for grooming the pile all the same way on the carpet. So you lay the pile at the end of the job, but you can also agitate your pre-spray in. And if you're gonna do it by the book, that's how you should really do it. Um, you should always agitate, or what you can do is use something like one of these, which is a SIBO duo, fairly inexpensive for what they are really. Go on for a long time, made in Germany. And they have, and they'll look rather dirty because this one's been used on our training course quite a lot. But they've got two contra-rotating brushes. I won't zoom in too much on these, Alana. <laughs> they look pretty horrible. But one goes that way, and one goes that way, so it almost floats over the carpet. Again, we'll put the links in, but that's the great way to basically massage in your pre-spray, rejuvenate the pile of the carpet, and press the customer, and get the most from the pre-spray, because the more you agitate it in, the more effective it becomes. So it is the better way to do it, really. I'll just go and pop this back. We then use the machine to rinse and extract away um, the soilage using a wand, the carpet cleaning wand. And my carpet cleaning wand is just behind you, Alana, if you want to. So yeah, we'll just grab this. This is a twin jet, because it has two jets. 12 inches wide carpet cleaning wand that goes out with most of our machine packages and is used for cleaning the carpet. This is always constantly sucking and it's in contact with the carpet. So it's always drawing the water up. This is a trigger valve. Squeeze the trigger and the water comes out of the two jets at the bottom here, sorry. Your uh, hose, water hose connects there and your vacuum hose connects here. And it has a one and a half inch hole there which basically fits onto a one and a half inch um, vacuum cuff which will be supplied with the machine um, yeah now when you're working with a wand you basically want to squeeze the trigger the water comes out and you want to do about a meter or so with the trigger squeezed a little bit of agitation and then a couple of drying passes without squeezing the trigger just to pick everything up now the best angle for the wand to be at best working angle for these ones is not down here not up here, but basically level with the carpet. So it's parallel to the floor. So when you, I'm working, I'm conscious that I don't want to be doing this sort of thing. I'm exaggerating it, but doing this because I want to keep good contact with the carpet. So I tend to work and move back as I work. I actually release the trigger here, but go back about two inches to pick that last bit up because you do not want your, um, cleaning solution penetrating the backing of the carpet because that's when potential problems, if they're gonna happen, would happen. But if you're using the right one technique and you're using a decent machine, really you're not gonna have any problems and really not gonna have too many worries. So you always wanna just release that trigger, pick that last bit up, do a couple of dry passes just to ensure that you're picking everything up that you've put down before you move on to the next bit. And always work in a methodical manner where you're able to know where you've been and pick up that water immediately with those couple of dry passes. Although it is picking up all the time, you're just finishing with those two dry passes to make sure most of the water comes out that you've put down. Um, 
the next thing that you would like, to, uh, really, that you want to do after you've extracted uh, with a carpet cleaning wand is you would like to apply some finishing sprays. They're things that fix the color and brighten. They also neutralize the pH, uh, which each uh, cleaning chemical has a pH value. When you put on an acidic spray, it then neutralizes that pH and returns it to roughly around seven, which is the way things really want to be between 5.5, I think, and seven. Um, and also it's your chance to put down your deodorizers, which uh, can have bactericides in ideally, which uh, neutralize mal odors, so kill all your bad odors, make it smell nice. We've got ones that smell like extra fresh, which smells of fresh linen. Um, so you'd apply that. Something like Supreme Finish, Supreme Finish, that will basically fix the colors, neutralize the pH, and also has a bit of bactericide in it as well. Uh, so it helps to kill any fungicidal spores and any uh, bacteria that's in the carpet. And the last thing you would do is use this brush over here, which we showed earlier, this one, to lay the pile. There's no pile on this carpet, I know that. But you just lay the pile all the way, you know, all in the same direction, starting in the far corner of a room, working back towards the door that you're going to exit out of. And then you've left the carpet pretty much residue free, dirt free, pet hair free, people hair free, nice and clean. Um, you've chemically neutralized and you've also put down your deodorizer as well. So that's great. That's a good way to leave your carpet. Let's pop this back. Okay, let's show you the machine. Okay, so before we can use our machine, we need to plug it in. Um, Alana, if you come around here, we'll just show the ladies and gentlemen the leads on the machine. We have a white mains lead. Now, this is the one that powers your two vacuum motors and your water pump. The vacuum motors obviously suck up. The water pump, when you squeeze the trigger on your tool, allows you to spray water out. Now, I'm just going to plug that, we go around here, into a double wall socket. I'm going to do the same with this black lead. The black lead powers the heating system and in this particular machine it's a built-in three kilowatt um, immersion tank heater built into the clean water tank. Three kilowatt is the most you can draw from a, a UK plug socket so the heater is as powerful as it can be. Turn both of these on. And it's absolutely fine for you to plug your two leads into one double wall socket. But what you cannot do is have both these leads coming into one extension lead. So if you're going to use an extension lead, you need to use two and they need to go individually into the wall like that. You can't have two leads going into one. If we move round over here, that's your mains on switch. And that starts two cooling fans to keep all your electronics nice and cool and dry. Um, keep your vacuum motors working longer, keep your pump working longer. You've got a cooling fan on the side of the machine and um, some cooling fans underneath as well, uh, which help to draw the fresh cold dry air in and push it out and uh, keep that air circulating around your electrics. Um, here is where your water goes and I'm going to grab a, a bucket <clears throat> now it's important to note that we, we have two buckets uh, here at Ashby's. We always have white ones for filling and red ones for emptying. It's important to colour code your buckets really because you always want to fill your machine with a clean bucket that you've not used for emptying. Now what I mean by that is that you don't empty into your, your bucket, rinse it out, flush it away, rinse it out, flush it away, rinse it out, flush it away, fill with clean water, then fill your machine because you'll still have those very fine particles which can scratch pump heads, which can block filters. So we always colour code so that people know the white one is for filling, it's never used for emptying. And if we look over here, we have a red one that is always used for emptying and never used for filling. So I suggest if you're buying a new starter package from us, they come with two buckets, they're red and white. Keep your white one for your clean water and keep the red one for your dirty water from your recovery tank. So I'm going to pour this in. It's quite nice if we take a look at how this bucket fits into the uh, 
the area here, you can see the, the, the enforcer's actually been designed, believe it or not, around this bucket. So it sort of locks in and you have a funnel design. It's very difficult to spill anything. If you look, got a nice funnel design to it, nice and wide, so it's easy to pour in. And um, I think we will have another look in here actually, Alana. So look, we have here, where my finger's pointing, a heating element. And if we look over here, you have the float switch, which protects that heating element. So the heater will not come on until you have a water level which is above that um, float switch. And as the water level drops, the float switch drops, automatically switches off the heater. So you don't need to worry about manually switching it off. And uh, to that end, if we take a look here, and this is the mains power switch, if we switch it on, you'll see it, it will illuminate. If we turn the dial, this is your adjustable thermostat, it goes between 0 and 70 degrees. You can set it to whatever you want to work at. I'll set it to 50 there. You can see this heating in progress light comes on and it will go off when it reaches temperature. Um, obviously, if you want to work at a, at a high temperature uh, and, you've ha and you've got access to hot water, you, you put hot water in. You don't have to start with cold water. Um, that's a question I have actually been asked before. So yeah, you can fill with hot water. That's no problem at all. Um, here we have your water pump switch and your vat motor number one switch and your vacuum motor number two switch. And we'll come to those later. Now we're gonna connect the hoses and the wand. So uh, our hoses are over here. Now we've got two different types of hoses, well, sizes of hose in diameter. Um, this is known as the vacuum hose and this is a two inch vacuum hose. It means it has a two inch diameter uh, to it. It has a two inch cuff on the machine end because you have a two inch spigot on the machine end. Um, and it has on this particular hose set, a one and a half inch cuff on the end there, which means uh, we can connect it to our carpet cleaning wand or our hand tool if we wanted to. I find personally two inch hoses a little bit less flexible than I'd want them to be if I was inside someone's home. So I tend to limit how many, um, how many of these I'm using inside someone's house because you don't really want to be taking chunks out of their furniture or dragging it past banisters and corners of walls because then you end up doing damage. And actually you can get something for that to help prevent it. Bear with me just one moment. Over here we have a corner guard, uh, relatively inexpensive, um, last uh, for a hell of a long time, I was going to say forever then, but you know, forever is a very long time, but they last a long, long time, very robust, um, and you'd need probably about three or four of these to show the customer you really care and help ensure that you don't uh, make any damage on someone's home. Basically, I'll show you where they go. They just go, look at the state of this wall, actually. But if you uh, put it there, that helps to protect the corner and your hoses can just drag past and slide past without taking big chunks out and damaging it. So they're quite nice. They're called corner guards. So yeah, a two inch hose is a lot less flexible than a one and a half inch hose. And um, I always connect this as my primary hose. If I'm using it using more than one set of hose, this will be the first one that goes onto the machine. If I was just using one set of hose, I would probably use a one and a half inch hose uh, because it is more flexible and more appropriate inside someone's house, less cumbersome. And you're really not gonna notice much performance difference anyway. So the reason we do have a two inch hose as, as your primary hose is it helps to maintain vacuum. So I'm gonna connect this up. This is called a hose cuff. You've got a two inch thread on it and a, a, a two inch slip. And what I'm gonna do, uh, although the water is probably very cold at the moment because we've only just switched the heater on, uh, we would warm that for about 10 seconds in the warm water in the solution tank. So I'll do that now and then we'll push it onto the machine. But you always wanna warm your cuffs up because if you push them onto the machine without warming them up, you run the risk, especially if they've come out of a cold vehicle, of them splitting up here and you wanna prevent that. By putting them in warm water, they become quite supple within about 10 seconds. So put it in your recovery tank. We can just see this heater bubbling away. Leave it in there for 10 seconds. And take it out. 
and I always check the integrity of the cuff actually to make sure that it's it's not coming unscrewed because they do simply screw on and off so just screw it on don't over tighten but you just want to make sure that the spiral of your vacuum hose is kind of up to the ridge there really just to make sure it's on don't you don't have to tighten it too much just make sure it's not coming unscrewed so you're not losing vacuum and then just push it onto your uh, recovery tank lid like so don't screw it on because when you screw it on you uh, you tend to unscrew it from the hose so let's lay this out a bit we're going to go around the houses because I'm going to show you 50 foot when really we only need 25 but it will allow me to show you how they all connect together make sure that when you get your machine package you haven't got any issues lay this out there okay so this is your um, solution hose we call this in a trade your hose is 3000 psi wire reinforced Goodyear Neptune so it's very high quality you've got a, a machine swage there and that's your male brass quick connect we call that male connector here it connects to the female connector you just pull the sleeve back and basically just push it in until that clicks forward and from time to time it doesn't do any harm to oil these female connectors to make sure that that slides quite nicely um, yes and now we need a joining tube let me see if I can find one here we go so here we have a joining tube which is one and a half inch to two inch so I can connect my one and a half inch hose to the uh, two inch hose. That's a one and a half inch to two inch joining tube. And I'm going to again soften this cuff, make sure that it's screwed on, which it isn't. There we go. Now it is. Um, soften it for 10 seconds in my solution tank. In the warm water, just so that it doesn't split. I'll run the risk of splitting. And that pushes in like so. And pretty much for me, it can live in there permanently because I'd never really use this two inch hose um, up with at all. So it's always gonna be my extension hose, uh, if you like, but I always have it on as my primary hose. So although it's my extension, I always put it on uh, first and it's the one that goes to the machine when I get closer to the machine and I only require one hose set I'd use the thinner one I disconnect this roll it up put it away in my hose bag so that it's not underfoot right let's move that over here a little bit and let's connect up our one and a half inch hose here's one we made earlier as they say exactly the same as the other hose except one and a half inch in diameter so much more flexible thinner hose one and a half inch thread on that cuff to two inch slip so that's called a thread because it screws on that's called a slip because it slips onto whatever you're pushing it onto and um, I'm going to warm that up for a few seconds in the in the solution tank as we have done I don't really think we need 10 seconds particularly because it's um, quite warm in here anyway And I'll push it onto my joining tube, like so. And that just pushes on again, make sure it's screwed in, and it is. And I'm going to connect up my water hoses. So I just connect the female connector of one hose to the male connector of the other hose. Pull back the sleeve, like so. Look at my thumb. My God, my nails. That's what happens when you shut your thumb in a car door. You actually lost the nail, look at that. Don't even know if it will grow back. Watch other videos and find out. So look, pull back the outer sleeve. Male connector goes straight in there, like so. Push it together, and again, that pops forward, so that's the bit you grease up, just to make sure that they uh, keep, well, remain working well. Let's unravel this. And the other end goes to your carpet cleaning tool. So we're going to use a wand. Let's make sure it's screwed on. It is. 
So I'm just going to push that on like so. No need to warm that one because it's actually a parallel. So there's nothing really for it to, uh, you know, it's not expanding. So it's not really putting it under any pressure. So that slips on rather nicely. This is your female connector and we're going to connect it to the male here. Now, if you ever have trouble because there's pressure in the hose, you can always squeeze the trigger just to release a little bit of pressure as you push it on, like so. And that will make sure your pump's not running, of course. That will allow you to easily and simply connect up your hose. When you put your, your wand down, this is very important. The, the best way to put it down is like this, like that, okay? Do not put it down like this, here, because you will rapidly, on any hose set, make a leak here because you're putting it under pressure and damaging it. So always keep it, always put it down rather like this. And that way your hoses will last a hell of a long time. So that's a little hack there to make sure that you get the maximum life out of your hoses. So I'm gonna show you a silencer. This is a silencer, um, a very simple thing, uh, which you can buy with the machine as an optional extra. Um, and it cuts the noise level down dramatically. So it's well worth having, in my opinion, because if you're working in someone's home or you're working in a hotel, nursing home, office environment like this, um, where you don't really wanna be uh, making too much of a disruption to the other people in the building, or you just wanna protect your own hearing, uh, it's a great way to make sure that you reduce the noise level down to the minimum it can be. Um, I'll show you the, well, how, how it works and the difference between the two noise levels. But if we come round Alana and have a look at the switch panel, I can, I showed you this earlier, but you've got vacuum motor number two and vacuum motor number one and your water pump. Now, when you switch an in-series machine on, which this is, you want to switch on vacuum motor number two first and then number one. So number two on first and then number one on. When you switch them off, you switch number one off first and then number two. Number one off first and then number two. So that if any vacuum motor were running on its own, it would only be number two. So two on first, then number one. And when we switch it off, number one off first and then number two. Now your silencer hangs on the handle here, like so. And this cuff connects to your exhaust to baffle the noise level. Um, as it comes out. So we're just going to do that now. Number two on first and number one. And I think you can agree that lowers the noise level to a very, very acceptable level where if your phone was going to ring and you're standing right by the machine, you can hear it. If you're talking to a customer, you can talk right by the machine as well. So it's a good thing to have. We're going to move over now to the wand. I'm going to do a bit of carpet cleaning. Uh, we spoke earlier about wand technique where we want to be at this level here. We don't want to be down here and we don't want to be up here. So when we squeeze the trigger, and I don't know if you want to sort of show a close up of the head there, Alana. When I squeeze the trigger, actually, I want to turn the pump on. One second. Moving back to the machine, I've switched the pump on. There we go. And we also, sorry, when we switch the pump on, we want to make sure we've got full flow. So this is our flow rate control. And it allows us to reduce the, the, uh, the amount of water that comes out or increase it. For full flow, for lots of water out, we go clockwise. If I turn it anti-clockwise, I turn it down, and that's perfect for when I'm using a hand tool on upholstery. But because we're doing carpet cleaning, we're going to have full flow, and full flow is all the way round clockwise. Don't over tighten, so when we get there, we just need to stop. We don't need to, we just stop there. And that'll be giving me full flow at the wand head. So we move now over to the wand. I'm sorry about that, Alana, but you're moving round. If you come round here, you'll be able to see the, the water coming out of the jets when I squeeze the trigger. So I squeeze the trigger, and the water's coming out at the wand head. I don't really want to do that, so what we want to do is as we work, we work in one metre sort of lengths, like so, and release the trigger, pick that last bit up, and do a couple of dry passes. Alana, I don't know if you want to come round and have a look at that from this angle so the people watching can see. Squeeze the trigger, give it a bit of agitation as you come back, 
and then release the trigger there. I'm slowing it down so you can see, and you can see you've got that, that line. Always want to pick that up before you push forward. And then I always do a little bit of overspray on one side and then come across. I'll just show you one more time. Do it in about a meter or so. Release the trigger here, pick that last bit up. Go back, I'm picking up the left hand overspray. A couple of dry passes. And then because I'm left handed, I, I work to the right. And that's good one technique. You'll notice as well, Alana, if you come out and, and show everyone that I'm keeping the wand level, this part, as I work, and I'm doing that by moving my feet back as I work, so that, and then moving it forward again, so that I'm working in a straight backed manner, and I'm not ending up back here, or ending up over here, or doing this, or doing this. And it, you know, I can more or less do it on some carpets one-handed, just using the handle as a little bit of a guide. And there we go. That's, in essence, good wand technique. Again, when you put the, hey, when you put the wand down, always put it down that way so that it doesn't drop down on there and make a leak. Now we'll move back to the machine. We'll switch it off and I'll show you where all the dirty water ends up. So when we switch off, we'll switch off our water pump. And we'll also, uh, actually before we do that, I'll show you a hand tool, a very nice hand tool. Let's have a look. So over here we have, something called a shear dry upholstery tool. So if you're fortunate enough to have one of these on your order, um, it's probably the best hand tool that we can offer, the best hand tool I've seen in 30 years or so. Uh, basically got a see-through head, which is a nice design. If you don't like the see-through heads, they're also available in grey, but I quite like the see-through head because I can monitor my soil extraction. Um, You've, you've got a, something quite unique, which is a spray bar, uh, which, unlike a jet, kind of sprays in both directions. So when it's actually on the material that you're cleaning, you can clean on the forward stroke and the backward stroke, which is fairly unique. Um, this is to allow you to reduce the vacuum. I don't really use that at all. I always leave it fully, fully closed. But should you be getting too much vacuum on something very fine, like some tapestry that's maybe a bit threadbare on maybe an a bar stall in a, in, a, in a pub or something like that. You can reduce it down if you needed to, just so that you're not stuck in quite so hard. But to be honest, you've got very little grab, which is really, really nice when you're working on upholstery. Grab means when it sucks the material up into the tool. Another really nice feature about this tool is that you've got about 10 foot or so of, um, of hose, and it's hide a hose. So your, vac your uh, solution line is within your vacuum hose. So that's called hide a hose and the head free swivels as well so it can just go round and round and round it's very very comfortable when i'm working on upholstery so i can turn it round do one arm turn it round do the inside of the arm do the backs of the chair so it's, it's a great tool very very easy to use very nice rounded edges uh, you've also got a flow rate control built in to this area here but i tend to keep that fully um, open and play with my flow rate control on my machine, which I'll do in a moment. So let's just connect that up. What I've done, I've switched off my heater, which has completely reduced my, um, basically completely reduced my pressure, and that allows me to easily connect and disconnect. I'm gonna reduce the pressure a bit further on my flow rate control in case there's any trap. Just open that up, anti-clockwise I've gone there. Pull that back, push it on, and what I'm going to do, give that a bit of a squeeze, see where we are pressure-wise. Need to turn the pump on first, of course. The pump is round here, switch, switch on, switch is here. Turn it on. And there you can see, when I squeeze the trigger, I've got all the water coming out. Might have a little bit more than that. Got a nice amount of water there for some upholstery cleaning. We've got some upholstery here, look. Very, very similar to the technique you use when you're cleaning carpets. Just want to always finish with a couple of dry passes, so 
and then you can see you can monitor your soil extraction continue that all around the chair when you do edges bar it off so bring your hand up and you might want to just come around here so you can see that bring your hand up if i'm there i'm getting no no vacuum i create the vacuum by putting my hand between the chair and the tool to create vacuum and that allows me to clean the edges and as you can see come around this, this way very very easy to use tool giving me very very dry results which i can also monitor to this clear head and i mentioned earlier about how easy it is to work over the back of things with a lot of hand tools you can catch uh, your pipes and your connectors on the back of the chair but with this tool no i can work very very nicely as you can see and you can get it so dry with a sheer dry hand tool that they're more or less by the time you've toweled off with an enforcer and the right flow, flow rate and technique you can probably get drying times as fast as about 25 minutes um, which is really quite incredible actually surprising how dirty these chairs are come and have a look at this Alana See, but by the time he'd done a couple of dry passes, you can see you can't really see now, but that wasn't very good. But there was muck in there before, you wouldn't think of it on this chair, but it's there. So that's called a shear dry, a roto back shear dry hand tool. And I think, really, when it comes to doing upholstery, that's about as good as it gets. Um, I wouldn't use this on stairs because you're going to damage the head anywhere where there's carpet gripper. I would tend to have your standard hand tools, which I'll show you over here. Let me just switch this machine off actually. A standard hand tool, something like this is great for stairs. You can get dedicated stair tools as well. But something like this where it's got a stainless steel head is perfect for stairs because you are going to not really damage it when you're rubbing it up against the gripper that you find on stairs. So that's a good hand tool for that sort of thing. Okay. Let's have a look at where all the dirty water goes. So your dirty water ends up in your, what we call recovery tank or dirty water tank. And if we take a peek in there, you'll see our dirty water in there. Got a little bit of it in there. This is actually a high level safety shutoff, which is a float cage and you can just see it. There's a float ball in there. <clears throat> and as the water level rises, it gets to about here and the change in air pressure is enough to make that float ball jump up, jump up and mechanically seal against the top here so that you're getting no vacuum. So your vacuums will go high pitched. They won't switch off. They'll just go high pitched under load. You'll be getting no vacuum. And basically then you know it's time to switch off the machine like we've done now and empty it into our dedicated uh, dirty water bucket. But what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you how to empty the machine and pretend we finished the job. So disconnect your hoses like so. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to use something called a pump out hose, which is this red sort of five foot hose here. You have a male connector at one end and you have no connector, an open end at the other end. We put the open end into our recovery tank and we put the male connector end into our female connector on the front, like so. And what we're going to do, we're going to pump the water from our clean tank into our dirty tank. So this is where all the, the clean water was or is. And it's going to end up here in our dirty tank. And this is going to give us the opportunity to not only empty our machine in the right way, but also give our dirty water tank a bit of a clean and a flush out so that it's um, nice and um, sanitized, ready for um, packing away or ready for going to the next job. So when you turn it on, you're not shooting out all the mucky, damp air that you had from the previous job. So let's switch on our water pump. Let's switch off our heater. Even though we've got the low level safety cut off, we won't be using it anymore, so we'll switch it off. We'll move round to our flow rate control because if you remember, I'd reduced it and we want full flow out, so we'll turn that clockwise. 
And let's have a look and see what's going on here. So look, we're taking the water from this tank here, our clean tank, and it's coming out quite nicely with our 250 PSI pump. And I'm gonna, basically, the vacuum motors are not running. You do not want them running. I'm gonna give that cage that protects the vacuum motor a rinse because in reality, in real world situations, that's gonna be covered in pet hair and fluff from the carpet. And it's our opportunity to rinse and sanitize this tank. So I'd flush it round like this, basically give it a good rinse round. Then I'm gonna put it in there like so, shut the lid down so it doesn't fall out with the vibration from the pump. That weight of the lid will keep that secure. This is our dirty water bucket, the one we've never used for filling. Bring it over to our dump valve. This is called a dump valve. It lets the dirty water out. Notice I hit the lip uh, under the dump valve. Give it a little bit of a tilt and open slowly your, gate, your dump valve so that the dirty water comes out into the bucket. And there we go. There's one. And we continue this until we've completely emptied the tank. What we're going to do is we're going to keep an eye on whether there's water coming out of this hose because although the pump can dry run, we don't really want to dry run it. Now, it's going to pump more or less all the water out of our solution tank. There'll be a little bit left, but that doesn't really matter. We, we don't worry about the little bit that's left in the bottom. It doesn't do any harm to anything and it will never come out even if you lay the machine backwards in your van. You just keep pumping it until you expose your mushroom filter. And I'll show you what that is. That's where your water gets sucked in. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, you can. That's good. You've got your light on your camera. So just here is out. It's your mushroom filter. It's quite hot now. And um, yeah, there it is. So once that starts to be exposed and you hear it um, gargling and you got that? There we go, yeah. That's what we're looking for being exposed and mainly water coming out of the end of your pipe. That's when you switch off your pump and we're ready to do the next stage of our packing away process. Okay, so we've more or less finished pumping out. I've switched off the pump, but let's just see Got the last bit here. Last trickle, I think, which, yeah, last trickle's coming out. There we go. Um, yeah, have a look in here. The good thing about the enforcer is it drains to nothing. So if you look right in there, and I know where my finger is, you can see that you pretty much emptied the tank without the need to tilt it forward. So it's good because when I'm flushing out with this hose, I'm rinsing all the dirt away, which is always very nice. There we go. That's your pump out hose finished with and disconnected. And if we just take a quick peek in here, here is your solution tank. And you can tell that we just exposed, do you remember I was talking about that mushroom filter? We've just exposed, what are you doing? There we go. Just exposed that. So we're ready to, um, yeah, we're ready to pack that away. That's fine. This little bit of water is not gonna come out. We wanna open the recovery tank lid and we want to run both vacuum motors now for about three minutes to draw fresh, cold, dry air in through that cage, which had the ball in, through your vacuum motors and out the back and dry them out. So I'm going to turn that on now and we come back in three minutes time. Number two first, then number one. Right. Now we've finished running the vacuum motors for three minutes, dried them out. Basically, we had the lid open. We're going to close that. If we move around the back here, we're just going to disconnect our silencer, which is an optional extra to keep the noise level down. We'll take that off, put it over here. And then we're ready to switch off our main switch here, which is that green one. Switch off at your plugs here. Heater, mains, unplug unplug and what we're going to do we're going to wrap our black cable here if i move over here a little bit you'll probably see it a little bit better there we go right bottom one goes to bottom wind bottom cable wind so like that and it's anti-clockwise now when i'm winding these up i don't do it too tight Oop. do it fairly neatly but not too tight because we're going to dock the plug into here there we go. Just 
Sometimes it looks like it's not going to go, but it does. There we go. So that docks rather nicely. And I just always sort of fiddle with that so we have a nice bit of tension there. So it's not going to go anywhere when we tilt and roll this into our vehicle, because these are actually the roller bars as well, along with our loading wheels here. That's our uh, top one, goes to our top cable wind. And I tuck it behind here because again, we want to be using that to roll it into our vehicle. Anti-clockwise, again, not too tight. It doesn't matter if you do go a little bit too tight, you can always loosen it. If you don't go tight enough, you can always tighten it. If only everything in life was so simple. There we go. And this one is going to dock here. There we go, it's coming up a little bit shy. So all I do, just move that slightly and dock it. Make sure it's nice. And those leads are stored away nicely, ready to tilt and roll into your vehicle. So I'll just show how that can be done as well. Obviously I haven't got a vehicle here at the moment, but if this was the back of my van, open it up, flap something over the bumper to protect it. This gets offered up to the bumper and this is a pivot point. And basically one hand here, I'll just show you one hand here and I just tilt and pivot it on like that and then when it gets into the vehicle basically I can then push it on like so and that's how we load it the reverse is how we get it out right and that's really everything you need to know about how to use your enforcer that's 250 psi um, there are a few things I wanted to just recap on, which is always fill with a nice clean bucket. So use a white bucket that you've never used for emptying. Put most of your detergent down um, as a pre-spray. What is in the bucket, you should just use a very small amount of a liquid detergent ideally, because that is your rinse. You're rinsing and extracting away all the detergent that you've put down. Um, you never want to let the machine freeze, so don't let it freeze. Uh, that can crack your brass fittings uh, on your wand, your hand tool, your hoses, and inside the machine. So always make sure your machine doesn't freeze. People always say, how do I do that? Well, the answer is you need to either heat your vehicle or take it out of the vehicle uh, if it's gonna get that cold or put the vehicle somewhere like in a garage where it's not gonna get that cold. Um, at the end of the job, always use your pump out hose to pump that water out um, of your clean water tank to empty the clean water tank out and take that opportunity to rinse your dirty water tank in here. And then at the end of the job, and this is very, very important, always run both vacuum motors with your recovery tank lid open and that'll dry out your vacuum motors before you pack them away. Um, yes, and that's everything. That's everything on how to use this machine. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. If you have any questions, you can give us a call or you can email us or you can just comment below if you're looking on YouTube. Um, but yeah, or contact us through Facebook as well. We're always happy to answer your questions and uh, we're real people. We're in the office Monday to Friday between 8 and 4.30. So yeah, feel free to give us a ring. Thank you very much.